Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Joel, and this is A Stable Life. Oh, man, let me tell you guys, it is good to be home. You know, when you're born and raised at a horse stable and you're constantly around horses and cows, you get pretty used to the smell of a horse stable and to a barn. And then when you're away and you're in areas that don't smell like that and you come back, <sighs> for anybody that knows what I'm talking about, you know that that feeling, that smell, just brings you right back. Everybody may not feel this way, but I know one thing's for certain, I missed it. <sighs> Smells like home. Let's see how these beauties are doing. Hey, Roni, William. Oh my goodness, you guys look so good. Looks like everybody's down there eating out of the round bell feeder. Buster! Oh, where are those little donkeys at? Where are they at? Buster, hey buddy. Hey, good morning. Hey, Rocky. Yeah, look how fuzzy you guys have gotten. Oh my word. You remember me? Huh, you remember me? How about you, Rocky? You remember me? Looks like I'm gonna have to work back their trust. I know one thing's for certain. I'll probably get it back when I have a bucket of grain with me. Right, Buster? Oh, we're off to good starts. This is good. Oh, give me a hug, buddy. Oh, I missed you. Oh, you're so fluffy. Hey, Spitfire. Hey, Suede, where's Obi? Obi, hey buddy. Oh, you guys all look so beautiful. Ah, all right, well, I guess enough talking. I gotta, I gotta get to work. I can catch up with everybody as I'm going through the day. Right, Leia? All right. Oh, yes, I, I definitely missed you. Mm -hmm. Well, don't catch me wrong. My wife and I had an absolutely fantastic vacation. We definitely enjoyed ourselves. We spent a lot of time with our family and the vacation really was broken up into three parts. The first part was family up here. We were all together down in Florida. Uh, the second part was pretty much just my wife and I and occasionally we would meet up with some good friends. And the third part was with my wife's family. So it ended up being a nice vacation. That's the good thing about a nice vacation is you recharge your batteries and then gets you ready for getting back to work. And I've already been briefed. Apparently we are just about out of grain, which is good. I mean, sort of, that's why I filled everything up before I left and we're out of hay. Oh wait, wrong spot. And we're out of hay. There we go, that's better. All right, Leia. Yeah, normally this would be a part that would be rather stressing. Uh, we're out of small square bales. All of them are gone and it looks like some plastic has blown in here that I need to clean up. What are you gonna do? But anyway, yeah, all of our small square bales are gone, all used up. So now we're using these big fellas. That's what we're doing now for the hay inside the barn. As for round bales, I'll update you guys on that later on. There's just so much I wanna tell you guys about everything, but I, I really need to just focus one thing at a time. We have all the grain in the stalls and we're working on putting hay in the stalls and I've been briefed on this a little bit. When I put this large square bale in, it fit exactly and they cut it here. So it obviously expanded. There's a lot of tension that's holding it in. So it's hard to get the hay out. Still works. I may need to get the tractor in here and do some cleaning up because this just looks not the best. <sighs> all right, well, I got all the hay in all the stalls, basically just clawing out the hay and taking the loose stuff off and carrying it by hand. With the round bales, we use the wheelbarrow, which might be a good idea to get back to doing that, but right now there's nowhere to store it until this bale's used. This process is definitely gonna be improved over the next coming days and coming videos. But I've wasted enough time in here. Let's let some horses in. <laughs> I am so sorry, Buster. I am taking way too long to get you guys in. I am working on it. All right, Poncho, come on. Good morning, Poncho. Come on in, buddy. It's okay. Come here. Come here. You remember my voice, right? Yeah, I smell like hay. Go ahead. On up you go. Atta boy. Let's get the grain for Tucker and the donkeys. Hey, Buster. Hey, Rocky. Hey, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Let's give you guys some food, huh? Come on. There you go, boys. Eat up. Yeah. Enjoy your food, Buster. I could definitely tell those donkeys were very happy to get some of that grain. I'll have you guys in a moment. I just got to put the buckets back. All right, you guys ready to come on in? Good morning, Roni. Good morning, William. Come on in. Morning, Champ. Morning, Jack. Morning, Rebel. Morning, Casino. And good morning, George. 
everyone's walking really well in. And as you guys can see in the pastures, the pastures are actually doing great. Cold weather helps that, you know. William, while I was away, did you forget where your stall is? William, your stall's right here. What are you doing? Come on. Right in there. <laughs> For any who don't know, George does this thing because of his bucket, he will only stand with his butt hanging out of the stall into the aisleway, and he'll take his first few bites of grain there. And then afterwards, he'll, you know, meander into his stall. It's a George personality thing, and it's quite amusing. Ain't that right, George? Hey, Swade, good morning. Spitfire, Danny, Tucker, right off the bat, let's go. Hey, Duke, Obi, Sriracha, Declan, Gavin, Skywalker, Archer. I had to think with Skywalker there. Go ahead, Samson. Oh, look at you, all beautifully braided. Wow. Hey, Argento. And Weather. Oh, Docs. I couldn't forget about Docs. I didn't forget anybody's names. And everyone ran into their stalls. All the horses are in and looking good. By looking at the feeders, it doesn't look like I need to take hay out this morning. Looks like Tucker just finished up. Hi, Tucker. He's one of the only horses that has a self-serve system. He goes right into his stall, eats his grain, and then when he's done, he's free to leave because his pasture is the middle pasture for the day. Tucker, have a great day, my man. You know, Tucker, a lot of people were telling me that they're missing you. They're missing their Tucker fix. Look at these beautiful braids. Huh? Look at this. Ooh. Fancy, fancy. I'm definitely feeling rusty. I haven't filmed in a little bit and I'm feeling rusty at it. But we'll get back into the track of things in no time. And while Gavin was taking care of the horses, a lot of you guys noticed that Skywalker and George were getting some special care. Well, thankfully, as you saw them walking in, they're doing fantastic today, but that doesn't mean that, that their care has stopped. There's a few things that we're doing with each of them, as well as Gavin, to make sure that they get back on the road to recovery. We are gonna be kicking things off with Gavin, who actually has some rain rot. Rain rot's always been an interesting name for me because when you hear the term rot in regards to flesh, your mind doesn't really think of anything good. In this situation, it's not as bad as it sounds, but it's also not a good thing. It's an infection. You can see here on his lower legs that Gavin has rain rot. And if you take note, you can see he's got normal hair all the way down till about here and he's actually lost his hair. That's just his bare skin. That's exactly what rain rot is. It's an infection of the hair follicle. And so the hair has fallen out and there is now scabs all over this area here. Thankfully, there's a lot of things that we can do to help him so that he is not one in pain and two, we move things along so that his hair grows back. And it all starts with putting on gloves. I always love that sentence. Usually the uh, <laughs> gloves that fist fit most don't fit me. So we'll see if these, oh, well, they do. Good deal. And no, I don't need to be putting the gloves on for my own safety. It's actually more for cleanliness, just because what I'm working with is an oil. It's an oil-based item. You guys are probably familiar with MTG. We use it quite a lot with horses when it's raining. Usually what you'll see is us just spraying it on the legs, but because of Gavin's infection and the severity of it, I need to rub it rather deeply into his skin on all four of his legs. Gavin, please stay in the same position. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna squirt a little bit on his leg here, and then we're gonna take the glove, and we're just gonna work that oil right into his legs here. And of course, I do need to be mindful. I am with a horse right now. It's all right, all right. So we gotta be mindful if this does start to irritate him, which there is a possibility because there are some uh, scabs and those scabs of course could break open and if it gets inside his skin, it will sting a little bit. So it's not the best process, but Gavin of course is a good horse. He's rather used to this <laughs> being a thoroughbred. So we're just gonna work that in front and back and along the sides. And I'm just gonna be showing you guys one leg, but I need to do this to all four of his legs. And uh, that's why I wear gloves. Looks like Tucker came over to say hello. So there we go. That's definitely why I wore gloves. That polishes everything up so his legs are looking better each day by us doing that. That will slowly bring things back to the way that they are. In case you're wondering about the severity of rain rot and what it can do to Gavin, rain rot could cause lameness when it comes to horses, but Gavin thankfully is walking fine. There are some areas where the scabbing's a little bit 
painful for him and those scabs are really only painful when pushed on when we're trying to clean those scabs off. For the most part, he's able to walk just fine and this really isn't affecting him too much out in the field. We just wanna make sure his hair grows back appropriately and he doesn't have those scabs on his legs. So by doing this every single day, we're bringing Gavin back to the way he should be. Usually rain rot actually occurs on the back of a horse because they're just standing out in the rain. Gavin thankfully does not have any rain rot on his back. And usually that's where a problem with rain rot occurs is because you'll get those scabs all along their back, which is right where the saddle goes. And the saddle rubs those scabs, causing irritation to the horse. One, hurting the horse. Two, making it far more likely for you to get bucked off of the horse because you're hurting them being on them. So, Rain rot usually means he can't ride them because of the saddle, not because of the legs. So thankfully he doesn't have any rain rot on his back. So now we're gonna be taking things on over to George. So that takes us on over to George, who as you guys have seen, George has been in and out of the lower arena. And that is because the lower arena is nice and dry, which means that we're able to keep him out of the mud. So what we're doing with George, and this is something that's pretty simple and it just involves a hoof pick. To make sure that George doesn't have any issues is we're just picking out his hooves every single day. And the reason being is we don't want him developing thrush. So keeping his hooves freshly picked means that there is oxygen moving into his frog and around his hoof. For thrush is developed from an infection that occurs in the hoof where there is no oxygen. Interestingly enough, oxygen kills the bacteria that causes thrush. So just picking out your horse's hoof, oh, he didn't want to do that, uh, can really go a long way in keeping them from having any issues. Just like that. And of course, the last horse that we're going to be working on is Skywalker. Hey, buddy. Skywalker is doing really good with the exception of his back left heel. And you guessed it, we're using Copper Tox. There's our mark. We're just going to treat that little cut that he's got in the back of his heel. Some Copper Tox, and we're just going to let that sit so that that penetrates and goes inside and kills all the bacteria. There we go. Stuff's awesome. Absolutely a necessity for our stable. And for keeping Skywalker moving, huh, buddy? Look at those gentle eyes that he's got. Huh? When you have as many horses as we do, those things you gotta keep a watch for, and you usually have one that is in need of some special care. And those are the three that need it right now, and they're good to go. And in the last video where you guys were with Gavin, Gavin updated you guys on Poe, and a few of you had some questions about Poe and returning to college. Firstly, does that mean that Poe's gone for good? No, Poe is not gone for good. In fact, Poe is gonna be coming back again this upcoming spring. So she asked that we keep the stall open for her and for Poe. So the stall is kept open for Poe. Being that they are a current boarder, they of course get the ability to hold that stall. As for the rest of the horses, there's not really much to update you guys on. Everybody's doing pretty good. And they've all just about finished eating. So I think that means it's time to do some turnout. Already swayed, you are free to leave. Have yourself a fantastic day. Come on in, Scoots, I need to close the doors. All right, are the rest of you guys ready to head on out? I think we know the answer, don't we, champ? All right, you guys, I'm gonna set the camera up right here, and I just want, I think it's funny that you guys should uh, see this. Take note of how many horses have to just, just get a couple bites of hay before they leave. Alrighty guys, I just turned out our last two horses. We've got Weather getting a drink and Samson in line to get a drink. The wind's picking up, so I have my heated vest stop on high. <laughs> the tongue hanging out on Weather. Oh man, you guys crack me up. But that is gonna be it for morning feeding. There's just one thing I wanted to show you guys. Didn't have the camera with me, but the cows knocked this gate over, so I fixed it quickly. Righted it on this side, and then I retied it on this side, and. Since they can't get through it, they're moving on to other areas. <laughs> Those cows, let me tell you, they crack me up. All that's left for us to do is to close the gate for the horses out in the middle field and get some hay for the donkeys. It's like you guys are all getting your drinks nice and good. That is good stuff. There we go. Good deal, good deal. We're just gonna close this gate up so the donkeys have access to both runs. Let some nice sunlight in there for them. And what are you two troublemakers up to this morning? Huh? They're so excited. And some other updates. Tucker now has two boxes down here. The donkeys also have a box. 
Last thing that I need to do here is uh, Poncho left a little bit of mess in here, so we're just gonna clean this all up. And then we're gonna head on up and see how Megan's doing up in the store. Hello, Buster. You curious as to what's going on, huh? There we go. Think we can get it all in one fork full, guys? Yeah. It didn't work out that way, did it? There we go. Tucker stall's clean, so it's ready for one. Tucker in the butt. Tucker for the afternoon. Two, the donkeys for the day. And three, poncho for the evening. It's a widely used stall, isn't it? All right, see you later, guys. All righty, so here's the big question. Did you end up having a good vacation? Yeah, it was fun. We went on a cruise and it was really nice weather. And how about you? How was your vacation? Oh, my vacation was good, but I missed the farm. It is what it is. So did you end up enjoying sunny Florida or did you miss being home in cold Pennsylvania? It was a nice break from the cold, but I like Pennsylvania. You like the colder weather over the warmer weather? Not necessarily, but I like Pennsylvania. It's the mountains, isn't it? It's the seasons. I really hope that you guys enjoyed being back here at a stable life. I know I'm definitely happy to be home. As you guys can see, my wife's happy to be home. We had a fantastic vacation, but we're ready to get back to work. Uh, you guys will remember that in the previous video, we mentioned the Amazon wish list. If you guys wanted to reach out to donate some medical supplies to our stable to help our horses or other things, you are certainly welcome to do so. The list is down in the description below. I just wanted to send a special thank you. We are, have already received a few items. Starting off with, we got some Horseshoe Secret, which this is something that we use as a hoof conditioner when it comes to really dry times of the year. We'll put this on to make sure that the hooves stay moist and with prevent cracking or other problems like that. And so I just wanted to thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that uh, you sent that over for us. This is gonna go right into our medicine cabinet. And another thing that we got is also some Vetresin. And this is something that we use for wound and skin care whenever the horses get a cut or an abrasion. Bana, I wanted to send a special thank you from all of us here at A Stable Life to you. Uh, we really appreciate it, guys. We also got a couple things anonymously. We really appreciate all of you guys kind of reaching out, donating these things to help our stable. It really means a lot to all of us. So on behalf of all of us here at A Stable Life, thank you. And on that cheery note, guys, this is gonna be where we're drawing an end to the video. If you haven't, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure that you're subscribed to keep up to date on future videos. Because we got big plans for this year and I hope you're excited, because I know we definitely are. If you're curious about the heated vest that I'm wearing, there is going to be a link in the description for you guys to go check that out. And as for the question of the day, it's going to be, what is your favorite vacation spot? And if you don't have a favorite vacation spot, what do you look for when it comes to going on vacation? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.